Awero kamasi again and I greet you in the mighty name of our Jesus Christ. I welcome for you once again to our lesson study. Today we are doing lesson number seven, which is entitled Motivated by Hope. Today our memory text is from the book of Isaiah chapter 25 verse 9. It's one of the best verses that whenever I read them, I gain that hope that the Lord promised us that one time he will come back. May we read it. The Bible says, And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. You know, one of the greatest, greatest thing that we can study in the Bible, it is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. It is something that has given people hope and surely, even you, when you think about it, it is something that gives you hope. May we pray. Loving Father who does in the most high, we pray that let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in all. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. The second coming of Jesus Christ gives courage, gives hope, and it makes the soul think of the next life beyond this one, this life of agony. In this life of suffering, it was still so with the reformers that lived in the time past. As you know that we are studying about, or oh, we are in the book of the great controversy, and we have spoken about the reformers. We have seen how they struggled so much to make sure that the word of God stand. And we see that one scholar has estimated that there are uh, 1,845 references of Christ's second coming in the Old Testament. 1,845. Speaking about the second coming of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, in the 260 chapters of the New Testament, there are more than 300 references to the return of Christ. One in every 25 verses mentions it. 23 of the 27 Testament books refer to the great event. You know, when we speak about the second coming of Jesus Christ, it is where the only hope is. It is where we see that we are all we can gain that hope that is needed beyond this life of darkness and suffering and agony and diseases and famine and all the things that we do that we see in this world that are going on. But dear friend, this also was the issue with the reformers. And one of the reformers named William Miller, the Baptist farmer, studied about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we shall see how did he conclude it with and what happened. And we see that still, this William Mira, from his study, he believed that Jesus was coming soon when he studied the prophets, when he went through the scriptures, studying here and there. He really believed that Jesus is coming soon. Still today, I believe and you believe that Jesus will surely come soon. Part Sunday is entitled The Promise of His Return. The Promise of His Return. You know, when someone goes away, or maybe your master, you're working somewhere, and then your master tells you that I am going somewhere. But within this time and this time, I'll come back. Jesus, when he was leaving this world, he went but he didn't tell us the time he is coming back. But he said, I am coming soon. 
and this was during the disciples' time. 2,000 years have passed. Jesus is not yet back. The promise of his return, speaking of Jesus Christ, we see that the reformers, the Protestant reformers and the pilgrims who left from Holland for the new world, belonged for the coming of Jesus Christ. These people studied the word of God. These people yearned when the, will Jesus come back. And they waited so much. That's where they read, they studied, searched for the word of God so that they can find something where to lean on. And you see that still in, this, in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1, up to three, Jesus gives us a courage that is going to make mansions, to prepare mansions for us. The time will come and time will reach and he comes for us. And here, we still have that hope. But these words were spoken to the disciples. We are still living now. And we see that even Paul speaks about such a thing when we are comforting those who have lost their loved ones. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, when we have lost those who have died, there are very many people going through such suffering. You have lost a beloved one. But the Bible tells us that we need to comfort with one another, that one time will come we shall see those friends of ours. I would like to read this statement from the book of the Great Controversy, page 302, and it goes, The coming of the Lord has been in all ages the hope of his true followers. Has been the hope of his true followers. The Savior's parting promise upon Olivet that he would come again lighted up the future for his disciples, filling their hearts with joy and hope that sorrow would not quench, no trials dim. Amid suffering and persecution, the appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, was the blessed hope. And it continues to say, when the Thessalonian Christians were filled with grief as they buried their loved ones who had hoped to live to witness the coming of the Lord for their teacher, pointed them to the resurrection to take rest at the Savior's advent then the dead in Christ should rise, and together with the living, be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so he said, shall we ever be with the Lord? Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. People are being disturbed with something called death. But we have this promise of his return. When Jesus will come back, just know that he will take all this away. There is hope in the return of Jesus Christ. Have you lost someone? Just have hope that one time, one day, these people will resurrect. Have you, are you going through a lot of perplexion, perplexities? The things that you see that are not even giving you comfort in this world. There is no peace. But in Jesus Christ, when he returns, peace will be there. This will read me to Pat Mandy. Pat Mandy is entitled Anticipating the Time. And we see that the reformers, or the Protestant reformers, believed in the literal, visible, this audible and glorious event that will happen when Jesus comes in the air. They believed in it, and we see that they taught even it. They taught it to others. Jesus' prophecy was given when he will be born and to come as a Messiah. And this prophecy, God fulfilled. But in the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, 
and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kinds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. We are seeing that when Jesus, at the first glance, when he came in this world, many of them didn't know about his coming and they didn't even recognize it. We find that men failed to know whether is the Messiah or is not the Messiah. And in the modern Jew community, we see that some of them are still waiting for the Messiah to come. But we are seeing that the second coming of Jesus Christ will be very audible. Every eye shall see him. It is the time where no one will say, I've not seen. Even those who are waiting for the other Messiah to come, they will surely see Jesus coming on the clouds. The unexpected, like the time that was unexpected, this is the time that everyone will be aware that Jesus has come. There are these words in the book, The Great Controversy, page 299. We see that the scriptures speaks of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this is the very keynote. It is the sacred thing in the scriptures when we see or when as we read them. In the book of the Great Controversy, page 299, the pen of inspiration writes and says, from the day when the first pair turned their sorrowing steps from Eden, the children of faith have waited the second coming of, of the promised one to break the destroyer's power and bring them again to the lost paradise. We see that this has been the hope when man was promised that a seed will come to save you. That's in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. When God promised our grant, Adam and Eve, he promised them that one time, one day, there will come a seed that will save us from all this agony that we are going through. And we see the Messiah coming at Jesus Christ born in a manger. And we see him, all the prophecies, the full feeling that was prophesied on him. And then we see him going back to heaven. And he gives us the hope that he will come back. And the reformers, the disciples, Everyone, the same that has passed through generations, they have this hope that Jesus will come back. It is only a matter of time. Jesus is soon coming. Jesus is on his way, soon coming. When we see the signs that are happening, when we see things that are going through this, in this world that we are living in, surely Jesus is not far from his return. But Tuesday, William Miller and the Bible. William Miller and the Bible. When you read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9 through 10, it brings something that I would like us to think of. Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9 through 10. The Bible says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand the doctrine? Them that are wind from the mirror and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. When studying the scriptures, this reformer, William Miller, studying the Bible, he rediscovered, he searched the truth about the manner of Christ's second coming. Day and night, he searched the scriptures to see how will Jesus surely come. And when you read in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13, the Bible says, How about when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, 
but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you the things to come. When we are reading the scriptures, this is love. Let the Holy Spirit guide us. The Holy Spirit opened the word of God to his understanding, and that is William Mira when he was studying the scriptures. He approached prophecy with the same diligence in Bible study as the other biblical passages he was studying. When he was studying about the second coming of Jesus Christ, we see that he approached when he was comparing scriptures and scriptures. You can read about William Miller's experience in the book of the Great Controversy. And we see that still he studied about the prophetic timing. In the prophecy, it speaks about the symbols, the symbols of prophets, which are made very clear in the Bible. And we see that the beast represents kings or kingdoms, winds represent destruction, water represents peoples or nations, a woman represents the church, and the one prophetic day representing one literary act. The Bible is clear about its principles. When it gives something, it explains it. That's why you see that William Miller studied the Bible being led by the Holy Spirit. And this comes to us, that whenever we are studying the Bible, whether prophecy or these literal scriptures, we need to always ask for guidance that the Lord may help us. William Miller studied the word of God and these symbols were given to him by the Holy Spirit and it was a mystery. And we see that some of the mysteries were locked, but with time they were open or unveiled. That's why you see the book of Revelation. And the part when next day is entitled the 2,300 days of Daniel 8, verse 14. And when you read in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 15, first of all, we see that William Miller observed that events predicted by the prophets were precisely fulfilled. He looked at the 400 years of the sojourn of Abraham's descendants. Israel's 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, the 70 years of Israel's captivity, and Daniel's 70 weeks allocated to Israel. We see that all of this, he observed them when they were predicted by the prophets. And he said, he, he knew that they were pre uh, they precisely fulfilled. Mark chapter 1, verse 15, the Bible says, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. These were words of Jesus Christ when he was speaking to the multitude, or to those that were following him. And we see that when he was telling them that the time was fulfilled, which time was that? The time of his coming. That was the first advent, the time when he came as a Messiah to save this world. And he was saying the time is fulfilled. Repent. And when we read in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, it brings the picture of these days. And it says, And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Studying this scripture, it came to a mind that William Miller had to think what is the sanctuary that was to be cleansed. And then he thought of the 2,300 days which shall pass, and then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And the cleansing of the sanctuary was the purification of the earth by fire. That's what Miller studied and knew. 
and he counted all the times, and he came to a conclusion that this, this world that will be cleansed by fire. And you see that this, he stipulated a time that we put there. Read more, you go in the book of the Great Controversy and you read more about it. And we see that William Miller said that this world will be cleansed by fire. And these 2,300 days were referring to that. But we see, uh, when you come in the Daniel chapter 8, verse 16, we see that William Miller, he diligently studied the scriptures to understand an event of such stupendous importance. He discovered the linkage between Daniel 8 and Daniel 9. In Daniel 8, the angel was instructed to make this man understand the vision. And that is the man, Daniel. We see that in Daniel chapter 8, verse 16, he was instructed to make Daniel to understand the vision. And we see that in Daniel chapter 8, verse 27, we see that it is where the script, actually the chapter is ending. But the only portion that was left there unexplained, it is uh, that 1,000, that 2,000. 300 days, and we see that the scripture says, and I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for certain days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. We see that still Daniel is confused of the other prophecy that was not explained. And we see that uh, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 22, and Daniel chapter 9, verse 23, 25, and 27, we see it says, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. Daniel was, uh, again, the angel was sent to make Daniel understand the scriptures to make him know what was happening. And we see that Daniel chapter 9, verse 23, it says, consider the matter and understand the vision. So when Daniel was told to consider the matter and understand the vision, the first words of the angels were, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Determined means something cut or a cut off for your people and for your holy city. Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. From the going forth of the command, restore and build Jerusalem. That's when King Ataxas gave a command to go and rebuild Jerusalem. And where we see that the 70 weeks from Babylon, or from the captivity of Babylon, back at Jerusalem, restored the temple for the building of Jerusalem. So William Miller, when he read about the 70 weeks, then he was convinced in the mind that if this is the beginning of the 2,300 days, then it can help him understand and also count very well and know what exactly this yeah, or this period is. And William Miller had to begin the county from the 70 weeks which he had started. And then he came to the end of the 2,300 day prophecy. But for him, he knew and he thought that this will be the burning of this world or destruction of this earth by fire, which was not so. The 2,300 days of Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, it was pointing to something else which we shall see in the coming time. And this will take me to part Thursday, the longest prophetic timeline. And we see that in the book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 7 through 13, 
we see King Ataxas giving a decree in 457 BC. This decree was the last of three decrees to allow the Jews to return to rebuild Jerusalem and restore temple worship service. The third decree was the most complete and marks the beginning of the 2,300 days of prophecy. And we see that 457 BC, you see that it is one that marks the beginning of these years that were given the angel. And when we read Daniel chapter 9, verse 25, the Bible says, No, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment, restore and tribute Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seventy weeks, and three score and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in the troublous times. And verse 26 says, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy, and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto to the end of the war, desolation, determining. Studying this prophecy, we still see that Daniel predicted that from the going forth of the commandment to restore Jerusalem, there will be, from the going forth to restore Jerusalem or to rebuild Jerusalem, to the Messiah, that would be 69 prophetic weeks or 483 prophetic days, as we know that the day in prophecy represents a year. Then, since the decree went forth from uh, in 457 BC, 483 years will extend to the fall of AD 27. When we see that prophecy, when it is telling us that 457 BC, they are the starting time for 2,300 days, then if 69 prophetic weeks or 483 prophetic days and the ones between the restoration or between the command to restore Jerusalem and tribute it to the Messiah, it will fall to the 27 AD, where we see that this is when the Messiah was baptized and received the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we see that after his baptism, Jesus went into Galilee preaching the gospel and where he spoke of the time being fulfilled. That is his time. Now, in the spring of AD 31, in the middle of the last of this last prophetic week, three and a half years after his baptism, Jesus was crucified. And we see that it was AD 31 when Jesus was crucified. Then the system of offerings that pointed forward to the Lamb of God ended with Christ's sacrifice on Calvary. So we see that the type had made the antitype and eventually all the sacrifices and offerings of the ceremonial system ceased. That's where we see the curtain in the temple tearing in two, two, from top to bottom. And then when you come to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and the determined shall be powered. 
upon a desert. We see that now the seven weeks or the 490 years, especially allotted to the Jews, it was given to the Jews, which ended in, uh, in AD 34 with the rejection by the Sanhedrin of the gospel message, where we see that Stephen was, or the uh, Saint Stephen was stoned. And we see that subtracting 490 days from the 2,300 years, it leaves 1,810 years for the completion of the prophecy. And then we see that this leads us to AD 1844. And then William Miller and the Ara Adventists believed that the sanctuary in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, was the ark, and they assumed that Christ would come to purify the ark by fire in 1844. This was the belief that was there. People waited. They surely waited for Jesus. And October 22nd, it was the dead that was being waited more. And we see that they studied this prophecy and they knew that Jesus was coming in 1844. My dear friend, this prophecy, as we shall continue studying in the lesson that we are doing for this quarter, the great controversy, we shall come to know and to understand that these prophetic days were referring to something else. How I pray that you don't miss the coming lesson. That's lesson, lesson eight. Lesson eight will give us a big picture about the 2,300 days, which is light from the sanctuary. Don't surely miss. It will give you a big picture and you understand more this year that we were speaking about. May the good Lord bless you and see you again next week as we study about this prophetic timing and periods that can help us to wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. With that hope, motivated by hope, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Though there was that disappointment of 1844, Jesus is coming back soon. Don't, don't dare disbelief. Believe and have trust in the second coming of Jesus Christ. May we pray. Father, Lord, who does in the most time. We thank you very much. And we pray that we all get. Help us that hope to keep in us that we can be able to understand and learn more of you. Be the lead and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Be blessed and see you. Please follow us. We have very many things to give you. May the good Lord bless you so much. See you again.